Hello and welcome. LBBB is a relatively common condition that affects the heart's electrical system, and it's essential to understand the implications it may have on your overall health. So if you or someone you know has been diagnosed with LBBB, or if you're just interested in learning more about this condition, then this video is for you. Let's dive in. Do you remember how the heart works? Let me explain it to you in simple terms. The heart has two upper chambers called the atria and two lower chambers called the ventricles. When the heart beats, an electrical signal travels from the atria to the ventricles through a pathway called the atrioventricular or AB, node in his Purkinje system. The signal first stipulates the left side of the ventricular septum and then spreads to the rest of the ventricles through the left and right bundle branches. This whole process of ventricular depolarization usually takes less than 0.1 second or 100 milliseconds in healthy adults and the normal QRS complex, which is measured by computer from all 12 leads, is less than or equal to 110 milliseconds or about 2.5 small boxes on the ECG paper by eye. However, if anything interferes with this normal process, like a block or delay in the bundle branch system, it can make the QRS complex wider or change its direction. This class focuses on how bundle branch blocks or delays affect the QRS complex and STT waves on an ECG. A general principle to keep in mind when predicting what the ECG will show with a bundle branch or fascicular block is that the last, and usually dominant, component of the QRS vector will be shifted in the direction of the last part of the ventricles to be depolarized. This means that the major QRS vector shifts toward the regions of the heart that are most delayed in being stimulated. Let's talk about left bundle branch block or LBBB. It's another condition that affects the QRS complex, just like right bundle branch block, but in a different way. RBBB mainly affects the terminal phase of ventricular activation, while left bundle branch block affects the early phase. Normally, the left bundle stimulates the left side of the septum in the first phase of ventricular stimulation. However, with left bundle branch block, this normal pattern is blocked, causing the septum to depolarize from right to left instead of left to right. As a result, there is a loss of the normal septal R wave in lead V1 and the normal septal Q wave in lead V6, and the QRS complex becomes abnormally wide. Lead V6 shows a wide, entirely positive R wave, while the right chest leads record a negative QRS or QS complex. This is because the left ventricle is still electrically predominant with left bundle branch block, producing greater voltages in the right ventricle. T-wave inversions also occur with left bundle branch block, specifically in the leads with tall R waves, such as the left precordial leads. However, T-wave inversions in the right precordial leads could indicate a primary abnormality like ischemia. To diagnose complete left bundle branch block pattern, simply inspect leads V1 and V6. Lead V1 usually shows a wide, entirely negative QS complex, while lead V6 shows a wide, tall R wave without a Q wave. If you're having trouble differentiating left and right on the branch block patterns, don't worry, it's not uncommon to see wide QRS complexes that don't fit either pattern, and this is called intraventricular delay. So when it comes to the clinical significance of left bundle branch block, it's usually a sign of organic heart disease, unlike right bundle branch block, which can sometimes occur without evident cardiac disease. There are various underlying factors that can cause LBBB, such as long-standing hypertensive heart disease, valvular lesions, like calcification of the mitral annulus, aortic stenosis, or aortic regurgitation, different types of cardiomyopathy, or even degenerative changes in the conduction system, especially in older patients. Sometimes there can be more than one contributing factor, like a combination of hypertension and coronary artery disease. While rare, some individuals may have an LBBB pattern without any evidence of organic heart disease. Echocardiograms can help identify abnormal ventricular activation patterns and other findings like valvular abnormalities, left ventricular hypertrophy, and diffuse wall motion disorders due to cardiomyopathy. LBBB can be permanent or transient and may only appear when the heart rate exceeds a certain critical value or decelerates below a certain critical value. Finally, LBBB can not only indicate major underlying cardiac disease, but the loss of ventricular synchrony induced by this conduction abnormality can also worsen cardiac function, especially in those with advanced heart disease. 
there is a treatment option called biventricular pacemaker therapy that can resynchronize ventricular contraction in patients with LBBB and heart failure, which will be covered in upcoming classes. When a wide QRS pattern similar to bundle branch blocks appears on an ECG, it might not always be a true BBB. Here are some other situations that can mimic BBB. Pacemaker rhythms. Sometimes, pacemaker placement can make the ventricles activate in a way that looks like BBB on the ECG. For example, right ventricular pacing can mimic LBBB because the ventricles are activated from the electrode positioned in the right ventricular apex, close to the RBB where ventricular activation in the LBBB starts. Biventricular pacing can also resemble RBBB due to the left ventricular lead activating the heart from back to front, toward lead V1 producing R-wave in V1 similar to RBBB. Left ventricular hypertrophy. When the left ventricle is dilated or thickened, it can cause a delay in activation that prolongs the QRS duration, making it look like BBB. This pattern can be very similar to LBBB, including increased QRS voltage and secondary T-wave discordance. However, unlike LBBB, left ventricular hypertrophy is characterized by a prolonged intrinsicoid deflection, which is the time from the QRS onset to the peak of the R wave in leads V5-V6 of over 60 msec, or 1.5 small boxes. Often, left ventricular hypertrophy pattern progresses to incomplete and then to complete LBBB. Ventricular preexcitation, or Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. This condition can create ECG patterns that look like BBB. Left ventricular preexcitation produces a positive R wave in lead V1, because RV is activated last, whereas right ventricular preexcitation creates deep S waves in lead V1 similar to that seen in LBBB because the right ventricle is activated first. The clue to the presence of preexcitation is a short PR interval and a very slow inscription of the initial part of the QRS, which is called delta wave. Other situations that can mimic BBB are ventricular arrhythmias, especially at slower rates. They can also look very similar to bundle branch blocks. Let's talk about fascicular blocks or hemiblocks, which is a slightly more complex but important topic. So far, we have talked about the left bundle branch system as if it were a single pathway, but actually this system has been known for many years to be subdivided into an anterior fascicle and a posterior fascicle. The right bundle branch, in contrast, is a single pathway and consists of just one main fascicle or bundle. However, the branches and fascicles themselves are more like a ramifying fan than single pathways. It is possible that a block can occur at any single point or at multiple points in this trifascicular system. As we have seen previously in the ECG pattern with RBBB, the pattern of LBBB can occur in one of two ways, by a block in the left main bundle before it divides or by blocks in both subdivisions, anterior and posterior fascicles. If a block occurs in just the anterior or just the posterior fascicle of the left bundle, we call it a hemiblock or fascicular block. The diagnosis of a fascicular block is made primarily from the mean QRS axis in the extremity or frontal plane leads. Somewhat surprisingly, a hemiblock, unlike a full LBBB or RBBB, does not widen the QRS complex markedly. Instead, it shifts the QRS axis. Left anterior fascicular block, or LLFB, results in marked left axis deviation of about minus 45 day or more negative whereas left posterior fascicular block, or LPFB, produces marked right axis deviation of about 120 day or more positive. Isolated LAF is diagnosed by finding a mean QRS axis of minus 45 deg or more and a QRS width of less than 0.12 sec. In general, this finding is a very common nonspecific abnormality that may be seen with hypertension, aortic valve disease, coronary disease and aging, and sometimes without an identifiable cause. On the other hand, isolated LPFB is diagnosed by finding a mean QRS axis of 120 dag or more positive, with a QRS width of less than 0.12 sec. Usually, an RS complex is seen in lead D1, and a QR complex is seen in leads D2, D3, and a VF. However, the diagnosis of LPFB can be considered only after other, more common causes of right axis deviation have been excluded. Bifascicular block indicates blockage of any two of the three fascicles.
For example, RBBB with LFB produces an RBBB pattern with marked left axis deviation. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. We hope to see you soon in our next video.